how to teach kids investing. Today we're going to break that down. There are so many layers to financial literacy from when do you start, what do you teach, and the sequence of how to do it. Since financial literacy is not taught in schools, I actually believe that it needs to be taught in the family because every family has different goals. And since it's not taught, guess what? I'm gonna be your mentor and teacher. I want you here every day, five days a week, 10 to 15 minutes a day is all I'm asking and start this conversation with your family and get those kids financially literate so they can be financially free. Now, I'm gonna talk about seven things in this video. Number one, the system was not broke. It was pretty much built this way. I'm gonna talk about that, fun fact. Number two, I'm gonna talk about the books you should be reading. I'm gonna talk about the events you need to be attending, the people that you need to be spending time with, and they might not be your friends and family. Number five, I'm gonna talk about investment education. When and how do you start that? Then I'm gonna talk about debit cards and credit cards, and I know I make a big, big deal about them, but it's really important. And then last but not least, what can your kids do in the summertime? What can they do in the wintertime? And why you never pay them an allowance? This is a big one, so get a pen and paper. So the system was not broke. It was built this way, so just get over it. And you know, there's too many people trying to fix the system. And the truth is you need to be fixing your household, right? So here's how we're gonna start. You need to live corporate life. The system was built for everybody to go K through 12, which, you know, I actually a huge proponent of education. I have a master's degree. My son's getting a double bachelor's and a master's. I mean, like I'm a huge proponent of education. So don't get that wrong that I don't want you in school. I also think it's important socially, but what's being taught is not financial literacy. And every financial, you know, family has different goals. Some people want to be millionaires. Some people want to be hundred thousandaires. Some people still think they need to live debt free. That's a whole nother video. So the system was built that we go to school, we get a job for 20, 30, 40 years and put your money in 401k and park and pray, I call it. Hope the whole thing works out. We all know that's not gonna work. So this is your time, your family's time to make some decisions. So what grade? Well, I'm gonna say as a family, you should start the minute you decide you wanna have a family and you yourself need to just begin financial literacy. So what books should you be reading? Of course, mine. So I wrote the Millionaire Maker series. There's three books. The first one is The Millionaire Maker. The way you read it is you read the first few chapters and then the rest of the chapters is real stories about seven families that I made millionaires. You're gonna find the family that's most like your situation and the blueprints in there. If you really wanna hyper supplement it, you're gonna get my Millionaire Maker game and you're gonna put that around a table and keep it there and just keep playing the game. If it's too advanced to begin, go back and get Monopoly, <laughs> start with the good old real estate stuff, then bring, come back to the Millionaire Maker game. The second book is about how to build a six and seven figure business. It's called The Cash Machine. The third one is world class in my opinion because I'm an alternative investor. I don't park my money in the stock market and pray to God it all works out. I actually have been alternative investing, doing what Shark's teaching on Shark Tank since 1996, a long time. So I believe in the alternatives, just like I believe in the alternatives when it comes to health. The traditional systems, they do what they do. But if you wanna be wealthy and if you wanna be super healthy, all of that goes together. Guess where you're gonna find them? You're gonna find them in the alternatives. So we're gonna talk about a little more about that. The other part of the system is the pattern of money. You're taught to make it, spend it, make it, spend it, and live debt free. Nothing could be further from the truth. You wanna make it and invest it. If you study any wealthy family, they make, invest, make, invest. Those are the patterns that we need to recreate. Other books you need to be reading, I gotta put Think and Grow Rich in there. Sharon Lecter has some great books. She, with Robert Kiyosaki, wrote the Rich Dad, Poor Dad series. I worked with them from um, 96 to 2000. So mine is the how-to extension of a lot of that content. Zig Ziglar's work, Brian Tracy's work, I mean, we're all in the same lane and we're all talking about how to not only have success behaviors, how to be wealthy and how wealthy families live. Now let's go to number three. What events do you need to attend? So there's a ton of stuff. Ever since uh, March, 2020, when the pandemic hit, guess where everyone went? They came here to the internet and everybody thinks they need to be an influencer. Everybody thinks they are. And oh my gosh, some of the content that's out there is frightening and it's wrong. It's not even close to right. So I do an event every three weeks intentionally to help you get free leads, help you sell and make money. I wanna be the place every three weeks you are coming to so you can make money. I call it my millionaire intensive where I talk about the concepts that we're talking about in detail for about six hours. And I set you up to be in a marketplace then for another seven hours. In 13 hours, if you can't make money, you should probably keep a job. 
but I don't want you there. I want you to come back every three weeks and learn. So stay to the end. I'm going to give you some free gifts and you'll learn more about that. Now, who should you be hanging out with? A lot of you, you know, you have inherited behavior from your parents, right? Or from your friends and family. If you think about your financial behavior, where did you learn it? Where did you learn to pay bills? Where did you decide to be debt free or not have credit cards? Where did you decide to bank? I mean, what's interesting is how many entrepreneurs are like wanting to be big entrepreneurs, six and seven figures, and they're trying to use their little family credit union. Now credit unions, I have to give them some credit. They took a big leap in the pandemic and they took a huge spot in space, which for some of them, they will support you as an entrepreneur. But I know like I used to work for Chevron for a little minute, way back in different part of my life. And that credit union is for employees. It is not for entrepreneurs. So some of you, like, where did you get these inherited behaviors? Why do you have a mortgage or not have a mortgage? Why do you lease a car insurance? I mean, I can go on and on. My point is the people you need to hang out with are people who have been there and done it. So I have been mentored since I was 17 years old. I've spent millions of dollars on mentors. I, couldn't even imagine not having those mentors who would then become my team to lean on. I want to pick up the phone. I want to text them. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And if your mentors, coaches, and people around money are not that hands-on, like literally high touch for you, come my way. Once you're my client, you get my cell phone and we roll and you get my team because it's so critical that you get this right, that you sequence right, that you get your timing right. So again, the people that you spend time with are gonna influence you. You've all heard that you are, you know, the five or six people closest to you. Well, if you're all making under six figures, I think you're hanging out with the wrong people. So it's really critical. I don't know how many times I tell my clients they need to up level, not only to a right mentor, their friends and family don't talk about money. You don't have to get rid of them. You just don't talk about money and you don't talk about investing because they don't know. It's interesting opinions. So your timing is critical. Your planning, I call it sequencing. Your forecasting, how you spend money, all of that is important. So you gotta read the right books, go to the right events, hang out with the right people. Now let's talk about investing education. Investing education is something I think you start really early. Again, you make money, you invest money. So I'm part of a bank for kids that's coming out in May. Cannot wait to share that with you, but it's a little too soon. And literally, we're gonna teach the kids to learn to earn. They will decide how much they wanna to give to charity, how much they wanna invest, and how much they can have to spend. And immediately that money will go into an investing account. It's gonna be phenomenal. So finally, we're gonna have some technology that's gonna support all these things I've been teaching you and talking to you about. Because in the beginning, when you, like, think about it. If your kid is born, zero, works for the company, you can pay them up to $12,550 without having to pay tax, and 6,000 of that should go into their Roth IRA. Invested tax-free and tax-deferred properly. I bought, like, I did our cryptocurrency in our Roth IRAs, like when Bitcoin and ETH was really, really, really cheap. So we've made tons of money in those Roths, and they get attacked by the government all the time to be taken away, so go get one while we can still have them, and they get grandfathered in. Investing education is critical. The best investment I think, though, a family can do is a family business. You can have your kids start businesses, you as a parent, right, until they're 18. You have to do it for them. You have to do the legal entity. You have to do the legal taxes. But you don't have a cap on how much money those kids can make and never pay those kids an allowance. I'll get to that in a moment. So before I talk about debit and credit cards, I want you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button, share it with at least five to 10 new people because those have to be the people that you're gonna spend time with and hang out with. Now I'm doing this fun binge watching contest right now that if you're willing to binge watch for 25 hours, I will credit you 750 bucks towards new tuition to work with me. But I need you to binge watch. What's my agenda? I want you financially literate. I know if you've read the books, I know if you've come to my event, I know because I can tell by the conversation you're having with me, the kind of questions you're asking. If you've read and what I have done with my mentors, I consume their reading, I consume their work. And then I build into my questions and my expansion comes from knowing the base of what they have. So be here every day. If I'm here five days a week, 10 to 15 minutes and make this part of your daily routine to get your money muscles strengthen because right now you probably have atrophied little muscles. Now let's talk about debit and credit. So everybody thinks we you know, get a checking account and a savings account. I want a checking account and I want an investing account. The checking account, when you put your money in your checking account and you get a debit card, 
I actually think you should get those really young for your kids, like start around eight, nine, 10 years old. Like they need to know that that little ATM machine costs money. And if they go take $20 out and they have to pay $3 for that money, that's a really bad decision. So walking around with cash and a debit card and an ATM, odd, and you're not doing anything to build credit. So in, at 14 years old, we're gonna start teaching you credit and how critical credit is for you. Not only your personal credit, but your corporate credit. As you start getting companies, LLCs, S-Corps, you can start building corporate credit. You get millions of dollars of lines of credit. You can have tons of cash available to you and you wanna have access to money. Whether you use it or not is not the point. In fact, I'm super conservative and don't use it. I just wanna have access. So when an investment comes up, there's something I wanna buy, I have the money to do it and I have the access to do it very, very quickly. So I'm a huge fan of using credit cards properly, paying them off every month, treating them like an investment card, it's gonna build your credit. At 18 years old, the way you even do that application is gonna define the next really four to seven years of your life and how much credit you'll have access to. Really important to start using credit cards properly. Don't you know, wait till your kids are 18 and give them credit cards for their birthday and send them off to go get into debt and have bad credit. And I don't know how many young 20 year olds have to go into bankruptcy because they blew it the first years because you parents didn't do anything about it. Now. Let's talk about how to make money. It's my, my favorite thing. And the best investment you could do is get your kids earning money. Now, never pay an allowance. You're gonna have tasks that they're gonna do. They're gonna be, there's a base of home chores just because they live there, they have to do them. But then they're gonna earn money on different tasks. So what could they do in the summer? I'm gonna talk about summer and then I'm gonna talk about winter because I think there are different kinds of things, but also kids get bored right? They get super bored and you want them to have some, a lot of experiences, right? They might want to do something for a little while and guess what? They're going to learn. I really don't like to do that. I want to do more of that. I want to do something like that. So unless you let them experiment on a lot of little cash machines, I call them, they really don't know who they really want to be. So don't have them do anything for too long. So let's look at the summer then we'll look at the winter. So summer jobs, what can you do? Well, one of my favorite stories in The Millionaire Maker was a dog walker. And the dog walker then actually grew into owning her own like kennel. And then she brought on vets. I mean, she's become a multi, multi-millionaire, but she started walking dogs, believe it or not. So from walking dogs to babysitting, that actually could be kind of year round. But if kids are super busy and they're student athletes, which mine are, it makes it harder during the school year. So great summer, you know, pick up some big babysitting jobs. By the way, call yourself a nanny and you'll make more money, way more money. So there's yard work, there is car detailing, car washing, look around your neighborhood, your neighbors need things done. Here's the fun ones, you wanna help reclean out the garage. I mean, just projects, like what projects would mom and dad, if you're out there and you're a kid watching this, what would you hire, right? As a parent, what would you hire? Cleaning swimming pools. I actually have uh, some teenagers that actually started cleaning out swimming pools. Cleaning up, again, landscaping is a big one. You can charge a lot more money. Gutter cleaning, there's tons of things. So just think, what could you do that you're gonna hire that instead of hiring somebody else, you hire your kids and let them experiment being in business. Technical stuff, they're all social, right? They're all on social media. They all know how to do technical stuff. So they could do, you know, build birthday cards. They could build anniversary cards, graduation cards, thank you cards. There's tons of, of tasks. So just sit down with your kids, make a list of all the tasks that they like to do, that they wanna do, and start that 21st century lemonade stand with them. Now in the winter, it gets a little different. I lived in Lake Tahoe. Tahoe, grew up my kids up in Lake Tahoe. I actually grew up in Nebraska, but either way, we had a lot of snow. So uh, shoveling snow is a great one. De-icing is a great one. My son taught ski lessons for a long time. He was a nationally ranked skier. And again, I said, go look at, if you went to Heavenly Mountain, which is where he grew up, they were charging pros $350, $500 an hour. And so I said, I don't care that you're a teenager, you need to at least charge 150. I mean, he started at 75, I think he ended around 150 an hour, still way off the mountain prices, made lots and lots of money. What else can you do in the winter? Holiday things, oh my gosh, like from Christmas wrapping, a big one, put up and take down Christmas trees and decorations. I don't know how many of my teenage kids have made hundreds of thousands of dollars just doing decorations and lights, especially if you go around to like those neighborhoods with 55, 60, 70 year old people that have all, well, first of all, there's probably 40, 50 houses you could do and they don't like to get on ladders. They don't like to put up all those lights. So you can do all of those kind of things. So hosting parties and also catering. I grew up, my mom was a caterer. So I remember a lot of our kids, I know uh, my son went to work for a caterer during the winter time, right? Just to help deliver and he knew how to do it. So what can your kids do? What does your family do? If you are out there saying, well, we don't do anything. Well, 
you need to kind of put your head up and look around because there's a lot of things that people get hired to do that are short-term personal shopping. I hate shopping. I hire somebody around October, November to do all my Christmas shopping. I can't, like shopping's just an odd thing, but we'll get back to that. So what do you like to do? What are you and kids gonna sit down? You're gonna put a task together and you're gonna negotiate what that's worth. So your kids can actually make however much they want per month. They don't have to have an allowance, which is like being an employee on a fixed income. I don't want fixed incomes ever in your family. And you parents, if you're serious about this, start an LLC, the kids can work for the company, you get all the tax deductions and you truly get the full benefit of living corporate life. Remember, the system's not broke. It was built that the wealthy live corporate life. They don't have individual income. So before we go, I want you to click on a link below. I have a huge gift for you. So you're gonna first go buy my book, Make Your Kids Millionaires, which is a zero to 18 journal of everything I did, everything Kyle did to make our kids financially literate from how they started companies, credit cards, debit cards, savings accounts, investment accounts, all those things, everything that they needed to learn from zero to 18, it's checklist. Once you buy the book, I'm giving you over $1,500 of bonuses. I'm giving you a never pay your kids an allowance program that I've been talking about, but I actually give you the task list and the negotiation sheets. I'm gonna give you a financial filing cabinet for your kids. Probably the biggest one is an eight hour course called Put More Cash in Your Pocket. It's everything in detail that I just talked about, how to run this little 21st century lemonade stand. How do you make 500 to $1,000 in your family a month? And if that's too little, which I'd love that to be too small a goal, then let's go to five and 10,000 a month. So in addition to that, I'm gonna give you a software. It's a app for investing and your kids can start as low. It's a free app. They can start as low as $25, $50 and start putting money away as they make it. And then as soon as gravy stack comes out, this learn to earn banking system with debit cards and credit education. We're going to get you on that waiting list. We're going to get you that free app out as soon as you buy the book. So you're going to buy the book. You'll get on the waiting list. I'm going to immediately deliver all of these gifts to you. And I can't wait to be your mentor and help you get financially literate.